Hey guys, Sam here. Today's video is going to be all about laser rangefinder beam divergence. Now if you saw my review on the new G7BR2500, you'll see where I talked about uh, how big the laser beam divergence is. They've actually decreased it in size from the previous generation G7BR2. This beam is 1.5 mils by 3 quarters of a mil. Now also in that review you'll see that uh, I actually sent back the first unit they sent to me because the reticle and the laser didn't line up. Well instantly I got a lot of questions about how do I determine that, how do I check that, and why does it matter. So that's pretty much what this video is all about. If you haven't seen the review on the BR2500, be sure to check it out at panhandleprecision.com and there's also a first look video on this YouTube channel. Okay, laser beam divergence is how much the laser spreads out from the center, how much it deviates from the center. So all these laser rangefinders have some kind of a beam shaper or diffuser in them that turns the laser into a usable shape. So the BR2500 is a rectangle. It's a perfect rectangle with short legs and a wide top. So what it does is it spreads out that laser and at 100 yards it's rated to diverge or move out from center one and a half mils wide by three quarters of a mil tall. So that's roughly 5.4 inches wide by 2.7 inches tall. Now it's an angular measurement, meaning that it's going to be the same relative no matter how distance, you know, how far the distance is. So at 100 yards, if it's 5.4 inches wide, at 1,000 yards, that same size beam is going to be 54 inches wide. So you can see why laser beam divergence is important. We want it to be as small as possible so that we can put all the energy of the laser and all the accuracy of our ranging right on what we're trying to shoot at long range. So if you had a, a beam that was three mils wide, which is what the old BR2 was, all of a sudden you're looking at 108 inches. That is wide. So, you know, the smaller we can get them, the better off we are. It doesn't necessarily mean that the laser is going to work better, but it certainly means that it's easier for us to, uh, you know, bring to bear all of that laser energy right on the target we're trying to shoot, especially if it's a small target and at long range. Okay, I made a little prop for this video. This is just a cutout that represents the true shape and size and everything of the BR2500's aiming reticle as well as the laser in the middle. So the black section is the actual size of the laser at 100 yards. So we have a 2.7 mil or 2.7 inch by 5.4 inch laser going through the center of this reticle. So what we'd like, you know, to be perfect is for that beam to be right in the middle of this aiming reticle. And that's the actual size of the reticle. It's roughly, you know, as thick as the beam is tall. So when I first started using this, the first night I had it out in the woods, I knew I had a problem because I was putting the, the reticle through a group of trees that were a couple or 300 yards out in front of me and trying to range a rock face through them. Now the reticle was completely missing, you know, I was right between branches and everything, and the laser was completely missing all of those if it had been in the middle of this reticle. Well, what was happening is every now and then I would get a, a return at two or 300 yards, whatever it was, instead of the thousand yards on the rock face. So all I did was I just started moving the reticle around until I was perfect and I knew I needed to check it. So what I do on range finders, especially for reviews, is this is at 100 yards, this is my target backer, I put up a fresh target so I can see it real easily and then I look at the reticle and try to gauge how big everything is, mainly for a review, mainly for curiosity, but as soon as I figure that out and write it down, I start moving my uh, rangefinder on a tripod so it's super steady. I just start moving it around this target backer until it stops giving me 100 yards. So beyond this is about 105 yards, so once I miss this, it's going to give me a reading of 105. So if I have it right there, I'm still going to be getting 100, and if I move it up, I'll still be getting 100 because I'm still at the bottom of it, and as soon as that breaks that, here I can fold this out of the way, so I'll be getting 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 104, right there. So if I get that, then I know my beam's lined up. I can also come down to the bottom and do the same thing, except there's about a foot and a half of snow here, so that's not really working. But you can also check the sides by hitting a right angle, so you should be getting a return right there, and then no return right there. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, I recommend you do it with any rangefinder you get. They're not always gonna be way off. They might just be a little bit off, and the most important thing is that you know where they're at. Like I was saying about the BR2500, it worked. In fact, I didn't even contact Gunworks for a while. I took it to Wyoming, hunting, 
and I knew where the beam was in relation to the reticle, so I just held the, the portion of the reticle where I knew that beam was, and we got some crazy distances on antelope. And I knew I wasn't hitting sagebrush because I could come back and hit, you know, sections of sagebrush all the way along. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not critical that the beam is lined up with the reticle. You just need to know where it is. This is the way I do it, but you can use anything you want. You can use a fence, you can use uh, power lines, power poles, trees, houses, cars, your dog, cats, whatever. What you really need though is you need to be able to move around all four corners and make this beam come off the target that you're trying to hit. Uh, if you can do that, you can use anything that you can find. Okay, so I don't know what the policy is of every uh, company that sells a laser rangefinder as to, you know, how far out of alignment can the laser to the reticle be before they do something about it. I will tell you that Gunworks was very easy to deal with. They wanted nothing to do with a reticle and a, and a laser to be out of alignment. So uh, I'm not kidding you, in two days I had a new one sitting on my porch. That's this one and it is right on the money. It's right in the middle of the reticle. So. I know when I go out and I see a bear or an antelope or a deer or whatever, all I have to do is get the center of the reticle, the open portion of the reticle, right on that, and that's going to be my range. Now, a lot of companies are, you know, it's, a, it's kind of an arms race. So if one person has a feature, everybody's got to have it. So one of the, re the ways they get around having big, you know, big laser beam divergence is to put some kind of a fast scan mode on it so that you can paint the target to make sure you're getting the range you need on it, you know, if there's obstructions in place. And there's also some, uh, you know, programs that they put into them like brush and trees and, you know, all kinds of different things that are supposed to filter out some of those things on the edges uh, of what you're trying to hit with your laser so that you get the true reading to what you're trying to shoot. Well, I prefer just having a small laser beam so that I know when I put the reticle that has the laser beam in it and bounce the target, that's the range. I have no idea how you're going to tell if you're painting it all over the place in a scan mode, which range is the right one. If you're bouncing off sagebrush and rocks and trees and stuff, you know, just because you got three readings of one number, is that the right one? So I don't really like all that stuff. I don't subscribe to it. Uh, I check it to make sure it works on all the rangefinders I review, and I haven't had one that doesn't work. But the way I like to use a rangefinder is just put it on a basic mode, give me the most power, and have a reticle and a laser beam that's small enough and precise enough that I can put it on the target I'm trying to shoot. All right, guys, so that does it. That's about all I know about laser beam divergence and checking your reticle alignment. Just remember, laser beam divergence is how much it spreads out from center, and it's an angular measurement. So at 100 yards, if it's one mil, it's going to be one mil to 1,000 yards. It's just going to be a different size. Uh, the reticle to laser beam alignment is easy to check. You can use anything you have at hand. It doesn't have to be at 100 yards. It can be at 50 yards. It can be at 1,000 yards. It just needs to be something that's right angle enough that you can walk the beam right to the edge of it and then right off of it. And you'll see exactly where you stop getting a return. Don't try to do it offhand. If you try to hold this and try to do that offhand, it's just going to frustrate you. Put it on a tripod. Use a nice smooth ball head on the tripod so that you can move this around tiny amounts. Now remember this beam is you know 2.7 inches by 5.4 at 100 yards so I have to be really precise when I move it at all to see where the edges of it are. It's not that hard to do with a little practice though. Uh, if you haven't seen the review on this little rangefinders BR2500 make sure you check it out. It's a quality unit. I really liked using it this fall during hunting season. Uh, it works very well. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go over and check out PanhandlePrecision.com. There's all kinds of information like this on the website. Uh, stay tuned for more reviews and more how-to videos like this coming up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.